Hello, this is Andrew from PayPal, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to upgrade a classic PayPal integration to the new PayPal checkout experience. I'll demonstrate how to perform this integration on both the cart and payment page of a typical e-commerce website. The upgrade itself is fairly straightforward. It doesn't require any server-side changes. We'll only be updating the client-side code. In a classic PayPal integration, the merchant makes a, an API call to PayPal to request a token. Once they get that token, they do a full page 302 redirect to PayPal. The user goes through the PayPal flow and then we return to the, UR, the return URL that was passed in the initial API call. And if a user wanted to cancel the payment, they would just click the cancel and return URL and PayPal would actually return to a different URL that was specified in the same API call. All right, so now let's take a look at a classical PayPal integration on a mock merchant site. You see here we're currently on the cart page and I have examples of three typical ways that merchants request that PayPal token. I call them the form, the link, and the Ajax. We're gonna go through all three real quick and then I will show you how to upgrade each one. So for the form integration if we take a look at the button itself it's inside a form tag and that form is posting to a route and it's posting some data and then the button is simply a submit input. So when we click the PayPal button we should see a post to the route and then a 302 redirect to PayPal. All right, so we saw we posted to the route and then we did a 302 redirect to PayPal. And we can also see that the, the form posted some data. All right, so I'm gonna go through the PayPal flow quick. All right, so if I click cancel and return here, it's actually gonna return me to the cancel URL. And if I click continue, it's going to return me to the return URL. So I'm going to go ahead and hit continue and we land back on the merchant site. We'll see that we are pre-populating our shipping address form with the information collected from PayPal. We'll go ahead and select a shipping option. And now we land on a review page just to make sure your order is correct. Now I'm just going to place the order and you'll see that the order was successfully created. Here's my transaction ID. All right, so now let's take a look at this link integration. So if I take a look at the actual PayPal button here, you'll see it's simply in an A tag. So it's gonna make a get request to classic set express checkout redirect and the button is just an image. So this time when I click the PayPal button, we're gonna see a get request and then we're gonna land on paypal.com. All right, so here you see the get request was made. It was a 302 redirect to sandboxpaypal.com. So this time I'm just gonna hit the cancel and return URL, which returns me to a cancel URL. All right, and last we have an Ajax integration. So this integration actually uses a web service. So we're gonna use some JavaScript to make a call out to a web service to fetch the token. When we get the token, we're just gonna use some JavaScript to do a, a redirect to PayPal. So if we take a look at the code here, this time you'll see we have, once again, we have a link tag. This time it doesn't have an href, and beneath it's a little script that all it does is set an on-click event, and then it uses jQuery to submit an Ajax call to classic API set express checkout. It's going to get all the form data and post it along with it. And then once it is successful, we use window.location to do a redirect to sandbox.paypal.com with the token. So let's go ahead and take a look at that here. All right, so you see this time we actually made an Ajax call to the classic API set express checkout route, which was a post. It responded with created. And then we did that top level redirect to sandbox.paypal.com with the token.
All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to upgrade the cart page to the new PayPal checkout experience. So I just need to turn it on since I've already done the work for us. All right, so now let's take a look at our form integration. So you'll see we still have our form here, but our actual PayPal button is contained inside of this span with an ID of PayPal button form. You'll also notice that the actual button itself is inside of an iframe, so it is a hosted button. Now if we take a look at the actual integration script, I'm just grabbing the old PayPal form by ID and I'm displaying it none, so I'm hiding the old integration. Then I'm calling PayPal button render, environment sandbox for now. The payment callback is a very important callback for the new PayPal checkout experience. It must resolve a PayPal token in order to display the new PayPal checkout experience in a pop-up. So you'll see here I'm using the PayPal library to create a new promise. Then I'm using jQuery to make an Ajax call to the same form action that was in the old integration. I'm serializing up the form data to pass along with it so it should act exactly like it did before. I'm passing a header accept application PayPal JSON token this tells PayPal to respond with a token instead of actually rendering the PayPal experience so that the token can be used in our payment callback. We're posting just like the form did previously. And on success of the Ajax call, we're going to resolve response.token. And we'll see that when we actually make the call. The unauthorized callback is the second important callback for the new PayPal checkout experience. It is executed after the user clicks continue in the PayPal flow. And here we can use actions.redirect, which is just going to redirect us to the return URL, just like our mock site currently does. So I'm just going to place a breakpoint here so we can look to see data and actions in case you want to use something else in there. On cancel is executed when the user either closes the pop-up or clicks the cancel and return URL. And I'm just using actions.redirect to redirect us to the cancel URL. And then this on error callback will fire anytime there's an error during this process. And then this last piece is the DOM ID where I want the button rendered. So it's the ID that we saw above. All right, so let's go ahead and click the button and check out the new PayPal experience. All right, so you'll see that when I clicked the button, that we still made our post to the classic Set Express checkout redirect route, and that it actually redirected us to Sandbox, and we made it with that special header that I talked about earlier. And you'll see that the formed act action was sent along with it. But since we set that header, this time PayPal actually responded with a token, which is why we resolved response.token in the payment callback. So now when I click continue here, the unauthorized is going to fire and we'll hit a breakpoint. And I just wanted to quickly show you what data and actions are. So this is data. You can use any of this in your application if you want to before you do a redirect. And then actions contain some built functions. In this case, we're calling actions.redirect to redirect us to the return and cancel URLs because that's how our mock site is currently set up. We're just doing the same thing that the mock site expects during the checkout flow. So let me go ahead and hit continue. So now you'll see we landed back on the return URL and that it populated the information from PayPal just like before. And we hit our review page and we get our transaction ID. All right, so now I'm gonna quickly discuss how to upgrade the link integration. So we go ahead and inspect it. So we look at the upgrade code for a link integration, and you'll see, once again, I'm getting the old integration by ID, and I'm just hiding it. I'm calling paypal.button.render, 
And this time in the payment callback, I am using jQuery to make a get request to the href of the old integration. Once again, I need to pass that special accept header. And on success, I'm resolving the token, just like before. And everything else stays the same. So real quick, I'm just going to click my PayPal button. All right, so I'm just going to show you the cancel functionality of the new PayPal checkout experience. If I close down this pop-up, the on cancel callback will be called, and I'll redirect to the cancel URL, which you see here. All right, so now I'll go over the Ajax integration upgrade quick. So for the Ajax integration, once again, I'm hiding the old integration button. I am rendering a new button, and I'm returning a new PayPal promise just like before, and I making the same Ajax call to the same URL, sending the same data, and just resolving the token. All right, so now I'll quickly go over how to perform the upgrade on the payment page. All right, so currently when I select PayPal, I can hit continue here, and it's going to do a 302 redirect to PayPal, because this is a classic integration. You'll see that it was a post, and then a 302 redirect to the sandbox, just like before. And we return to the return URL, and we get our transaction ID. All right, so now let's go ahead and show the upgrade for the payment page. So you could definitely have a form, a link, or a post integration here as well. One thing you will need to note with the new PayPal checkout experience is we have to render an actual PayPal button. We can no longer just redirect to PayPal by clicking this continue button. So here when I select PayPal, I'm just rendering the PayPal button right next to it, and I'm actually disabling the continue button. So let's take a look at the actual button then. You'll see this is all inside of a form, so this is going to demonstrate the form upgrade, which is the same as from the cart page. See, this looks almost exactly as it was before. And you'll see I got my transaction ID, so my order has completed. And that is it for this integration video. For more information, take a look at the video's description on YouTube, and stay tuned for more integration videos in the future.